Hey everyone, what I've got here is the Pocophone F1. I've had this for about a week now, I've been using it every day and I've got a, an understanding of how it all works. So what I'd like to do in this video is show you the user interface, show you how it all works and yeah, show you the, the default camera app, perhaps so, show you uh, the performance of the speaker and maybe a game running and just give you an overall look at the phone itself. Now I will do a further review and I'll give you my overall thoughts on this. Um, I am aware that I've only had it a week and I think for everyone when you've got a new phone there's always a honeymoon period where you think that everything is amazing but yes first impressions have been very very positive and at this point I can highly recommend it. Now I bought mine from eGlobal Central. Now this is a a company that's based in Hong Kong but they ship to Europe and then they send it from Europe so you don't get hit with a uh, custom tax. Now the one that I've got is this version. Now you can see here this one here. I actually paid 284 delivered. So it's actually came down in price. That is an unbelievable price for this phone. So it's come down about 20 pounds over the last two weeks. That is the price of it delivered. Um, it's even cheaper if you don't want 128 gigabytes. Now you may have seen my, my phone there and, and thought it was red, but I actually, I've got the blue version. This red version wasn't in stock when I bought it. Unfortunately, it wasn't available. Um, what you see here is a case. This is a case uh, that I got on Amazon by a company called Xinco. Now I'll take this case off. I think this case is amazing. I really do like it. Um, but the thing I do hate about it is there's no protection at the front. So there's really no lip at the front. Now in comparison to my HTC U11's Spigen case, um, you can see there's a lip there that protects the glass. This one has no su uh, such lip. So there's absolutely no protection uh, at the front of it. And I'm kind of torn a little bit. I do think it's amazing. It looks amazing. The grip is good. It fits perfectly. It's got good protection at the sides and the back, but there's no protection at all at the front. Now, as I said, I have the blue version. And if I can take this off, hopefully I can show you that. Okay, so let me see, get this down. There we go. Right, so this is the Pocophone. And that was the beautiful red shell that I had on it. Now, when you buy it, you'll get this, you know, I've did an unboxing, so please do check that out if you want to see that in more detail. But you get you get it in this box. You get a, the charger and a USB Type-C cable. Um, it was a British three-prong plug as well, which is always good. But they also throw in this uh, silicone case, which I thought was pretty good. You know, it's a very, very cheap phone. And they threw in this case as well. So, yeah, that's really good. Uh, interestingly, you know, what I've got for the blue version, it's actually quite similar to my HTC U11. Um, get this round. This one is granted it's more shiny. Um, I actually prefer the kind of matte feel of this compared to this shiny feel of the HTC U11, which is just a fingerprint magnet. Um, but there you go. In fact, I'll draw a comparison while, while I'm at it here. Um, you can see it's, it's about the same width, um, but yeah, it's almost identical in size when you see them together. Oh, sorry, I've not even got them in the shot there. Um, so, yeah, there's not, there really isn't much difference between them. But despite this being about the same size, this has got, uh, the Pocophone's got a much, much, um, if I can get it here, it's got a much uh, larger display because the bezels aren't as big. And if I, let me see if I can get this on... So if, um, I need to put this in airplane mode, I don't know why it's showing everything when I've got an airplane mode. Okay, so just looking at the display there, you can see the bezels. The bezel starts down there on the HTC U11 and you can see there at the top. And yeah, I mean, the bezels are much, much smaller. So they've got a, a much bigger display into um, the same size of phone. Now, on the subject of display and on the subject of specifications, Let's jump over to GSM Arena and we'll see what this phone is all about. Now, I've talked about this in the past, but I'll just give you a very quick overview. It's got a 6.18 inch display, 1080 by 2246 pixels. It's got a 12 and 5 megapixel sensor at the back and a 20 megapixel sensor at the front. Now, this is 8 gigabytes of RAM. As I showed you before, the one that I've got has got 6 gigabytes of RAM. Um, and it's also got a 4,000 milliamp battery. Now, as far as battery life goes, yeah, I've only been using it a week. I think the battery life has been amazing. 
but it's too early to see. You know, you know, things change very quickly, and in a few months' time, I could be seeing something very different. But yeah, first impressions are very positive. And um, so you can see this an IPS LCD screen. I've been very happy with the screen. Um, I know some people, you know, they love Super AMOLED screens and all that. I'm not really um, with someone who cares too much about it, if I'm honest. But I have been very happy with it, and it looks great outside and all that as well. So there's no complaints there. Uh, it's got Corning Gorilla Glass. I'm not sure which version that is. I don't believe it's the latest one. I think it might be an older version. And it's got MIUI, so it's a customized version for the Poco phone because this, of course, is made by Xiaomi. Um, and there is the MIUI website, so you can learn more about it there, but of course I will show you. Um, so, some more stats here. Android 8.1, Snapdragon 845, a Geno 630. That makes this a flagship phone, which means that if you're looking at other Android phones this year, the Google Pixel 3, Samsung Note 9 in some regions, the Samsung S9 in some regions, because they use different chipsets in different countries, um, you're going to get the same CPU and the same GPU, which means that performance is going to be very similar. It's got a micro SD card slot, uh, uh, up to 256 gigabytes. It's got two SIM card slots, but one can be used for a micro SD. Um, what else have we got here? The 12 megapixel sense in the back is f1.9. The 5 megapixel is f2.0. Dual LED flash, 4K recording at 30 frames per second, 1080p at 30 frames per second, and you've also got slow motion at 120 and 240, etc. 20 megapixels, uh, 2.0 at the front, and you get HDR on both both of those, and 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now, this has a headphone jack. Yes, this phone has a headphone jack, and I really can't stress how unique that is in 2018. There's not a lot of phones that have got a headphone jack nowadays. Samsung still have one, but most other phones don't have a headphone jack, so that is pretty fantastic. You can see a mic up there as well. Micro SD, USB Type-C charging port, the speaker down the bottom, and then you've got your power and volume rockers. So, yeah, pretty good it's got the headphone jack. It really is um, quite unique to get that now, and the OnePlus 6T, which is coming out, won't have that, so... We're seeing more mainstream phones remove the headphone jack. Uh, some other stats there. Um, let me see what else we got here. Fast charging, quick charge 3.0. Non-removable 4000 milliamp battery. There's all the different colors. Black, blue, red, armored edition. That one's more expensive. And I think that's the one with 8 gigabytes of RAM. But the most important thing for me here is the price. You can't talk about the Poco phone without talking about price. And the price is amazing. So... Check out the, the specifications if you want to learn more. Check out the, the sales page, this website here, which will tell you more about what the phone is all about. But I want to turn my attention away from that now and focus more on the phone itself. So if I get this in shot now. So we'll bring the camera down a little bit. Uh, here we go. So um, this is the phone. And I think it looks fantastic. And I, I do realize that beauty is in the high, eye of the beholder. I realize it's a, a very personal thing. And some people love the design of this phone. Some people do not. But I think that it looks great. The fingerprint sensor, I'd ideally like it a little bit lower. But it's certainly not too high there. Um, I think it's quite good there. I would prefer it maybe there. But, you know, it's not too bad. Uh, the camera uh, has been pretty good as well and I'll show you some photos soon for that. Um, as far as the, the user interface and all that goes, I'm actually using um, the Nova launcher right now so if I bring this in shot, okay I'll find the Poco launcher. So I've been using Nova and really I, I chose that simply because I could copy over my settings from my other phone very easily. Um, Poco launcher. So this is what you would get if um, you use the default launcher. So this is the, uh, oh, I've pushed the home button again, which brings me back to the Nova launcher. Um, here. So, go back, go back. Oh, there we go. So this is their UI. This is what you would get if you use their UI. As I said, I'm using a launcher for it. I'm using the Nova launcher. But I, I'm, I'd be quite happy to use this as well. It looks really good. Looks very, very good. I think it's a, a nice skin. No problems there. Now, I'm going to put it on airplane mode just so that I don't get annoyed with any messages. But before I do, I just want to play um, a song, copyright free music song. I've played this song a lot, but hey, it's quite good and it's copyright free. 
Now it's obviously hard for me to to um, explain how good the speaker is, but um, as far as I'm concerned, the speaker is acceptable. It's not the best in the market. Um, you know, there's been better ones in the past with with phones that use dual speakers, top and bottom. Um, yeah, it, it, it's okay. It's acceptable. It, I'm I'm more than happy with it. But if you're an audiophile, if speakers are your thing then let's be honest, you're screwed. In 2018, more phones are, are trying to make the bezels smaller. And this is, you know, speakers are moving down to the bottom of the phone and speakers are becoming less of a priority. But I think that the speakers are actually quite good. So, um, yeah, no problem there. Um, and on the subject of uh, media, um, what I'll try and do is bring up Amazon Prime. Where are you? Amazon Prime. Prime, I think it's under Prime Video. For the light, oh, there it's here. Um, so Prime Video. Um, I'm going to turn the sound down so that I don't get caught with any kind of copyright thing. Now, this is another important thing. Now, you guys probably know that there was a big thing about the fact that this phone can't do Netflix or Amazon Prime at 1080p. So there's a problem with that, and it's something to do with a chip in there that isn't the right chip or something. And I don't believe it can be fixed with software. Some people say it can be fixed with software. Other people say it can't. Um, but as far as that goes, yeah, I mean, if you're looking at it, you can tell the quality isn't there. This is probably about 540p. It's not a major problem for me. And if you if you're watching Netflix or Amazon in bed, I think this would be okay for a lot of people. But if you really want crisp HD video, then you really couldn't watch it through the default app. But that being said, I have watched YouTube videos through my browser, and I've watched it in full HD. And there was absolutely no problems with doing that. So um, that is another option. Now, it's not as user-friendly, obviously, going through the Chrome browser, but it is an option if you want to do that. Now, what I'd like to do now is show you the interface. I'll show you the interface. Now, I've got it in airplane mode, so there's no more emails and messages popping up. Um, and this is the skin. This is the MIUI. So let's have a look at this. So, yeah, it's kind of par for the course. It's not really a, 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 like an overwhelming skin, a skin of Android. I don't think it is. And there's some cool features in there as well. Um, one thing I did like, if you scroll down here, see, so you've got system apps, you've got installed apps, and then you've got dual apps. Now, the system apps, I thought that was quite useful because what it does is actually show you what apps are installed by them. These are all the apps that they install. So you've got Me Cloud, you've got Messaging, uh, the camera app, the recorder, the browser. You don't have to use these apps, but they can't be removed either, so you'd have to disable them. But I have seen it worse on some phones. I have seen some phones put, you know, twice as many apps there, twice as many default apps. I think it's it's not too bad. It's not too overwhelming. And it's quite good that they put them all in one screen so that you can see where they are. Now, the other thing you probably noticed here is dual apps. And I, I'd never heard of that before, but it's, it's a really cool feature. What it does is allow you to, to dual boot, essentially. So, for example, when I launch Facebook, I could decide to launch with one email account or another. When I launch Amazon, I could launch with one uh, email account or another. So, effectively, you can assign multiple accounts to each application. So, if you do have dual SIM, you could have two SIM cards in there using WhatsApp. And when you click on WhatsApp, you can select which one you're using. It's quite a cool app. Uh, a quite cool feature, sorry, um, but I don't see myself using it right now. But there, there may be an option in the future where that could come in very, very handy. Uh, and there's maybe some apps I could use that. So there's maybe some YouTube apps uh, and like the content creator app that I use. That could be maybe uh, useful with the dual app launch. So that is something I need to test more. Um, I, I've not really tried it beyond just setting it up and getting an understanding of how it works. Um, let me see what else they want to show you. Well, there's the battery. I kind of touched upon the battery earlier. It's a 4,000 milliamp battery. There's a lot of tests out there, guys. I, I don't normally focus on that in my videos as far as sitting there, running it down to death or running an HD video for 10 hours until it dies or that kind of thing. I just go with user experience. And I'm maybe not the best guide for that anyway because this phone, my HTC U11, which is actually upside down in the case here, my HTC U11 had terrible battery life. It went from having the best battery life to the worst because of a, a software update. 
and the the battery on this was horrific where I had to charge it two or sometimes three times per day. So I have went from a terrible battery to a good one and because of that I think the battery on this is amazing. In fact I've not actually, um, you know, I think I charged it briefly today but apart from that um, I haven't charged it since yesterday. Um, yeah, it's amazing. The battery life is really, really good. But that is what you should get with a 4000 milliamp uh, battery. And it is what you should get with a brand new phone as well. Um, storage, obviously, I've got 128 gigabytes. There was about 100 gigabyte usable, I think, when I when I launched it. Um, now, the other thing here is a full screen display. This is quite cool as well. Um, now, what you can do is you can mirror the back buttons. Now, you've got down there, you've got the, the return button there, so the back button, and then you've got the, the kind of multi button there. And you, when you click on that, it gives you an option for split screen as well. So it's up there. You don't just, in my last one, I had to hold that down, but with this one, you need to hold it and then click on split screen at the top. Um, but when I actually got this phone, the mirror button had been enabled, so those buttons had switched around. You can see that? See them switching around? but I prefer it just by default. Um, the other thing uh, to note here is you can actually hide the notch. Now this notch, um, and if I can zoom in a little bit here. So this notch is something that a lot of people don't like. Um, and what I'm going to do is click on the hide notch button. I'll zoom in a little bit just so you can see the, the button that I'm pushing. Um, and what that does is basically just add a black bar at the top. And it's, it's quite convincing, you know, it kind of does... Um, take away the whole effect of the notch. So, I mean, the notch doesn't bother me that much, but if it does bother you and you think, oh, I'm not going to buy that phone because it's got a notch, well, I think it's silly because, you you know, with the click of a button, you can remove it. And the the black or on the screen is indistinguishable from the actual phone, you know, at, at the top, the casing there. So I don't think it's a major issue. Some people do, if, but if, if you don't like the notch, then you can actually put the, the black bar at the top and it's not like it's a huge bezel. So yeah, stop complaining people. It's not that bad. Um, there's some other options here. You've got the lock screen and all that. There's some options to lock apps and all that as well. Um, you can see that there in an app lock. So you can app uh, you can lock apps and you can you know add, assign a password or pin or you have to log in to do it. That's quite useful. I mean, um, especially if you're younger. I mean, I guess if you're younger, you're out with your friends and they're always grabbing your phone and doing something trying to, you know, do something on Facebook without you uh, doing anything, then, you know, if they're grabbing your, your phone and putting funny pictures on it or doing something, then, yeah, lock your app. And you can do with that with banking apps and other things as well. So it's a, it's a cool little feature to have. Uh, again, I'm, I'm back to the Nova setting, uh, Nova launcher here, because I pushed the home button. But I think the Poco launcher is quite good. Now, what I'll, I'll briefly just show you... Um, real racing so I'm not wanna, I don't want to spend I'll get the volume up I don't want to spend a lot of time to talking about gaming performance I have did this in other videos all right I need to go left and then right um, and yes my performance here is going to be horrific I'm behind a camera which is quite far away which is why sometimes I get this phone out of shot as far as gaming goes, I don't think anyone's going to have any complaints. This is a flagship phone, guys, and I know I've said this a few times, but it is. You're going to get the same performance as this, more or less, than you would in a Google Pixel 3. And I know Google Pixel, uh, th that range tends to be a little bit quicker because it's got a, a really clean skin. But as far as gaming goes, as far as all, you know, that performance goes, yeah, you're not going to have any complaints about this phone whatsoever. This is a top-of-the-range phone. It really is. The only thing it's not top-of-the-range is price. And yes, I talked about price again, but for God's sake, you can get this for £250 when a Samsung Note... What has happened there? Tap the icon. Oh, that's 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 all. Tap the icon to the top right. I thought that was the phone there. It's not the phone. It was uh, the game. Um, I've got a few other games on there as well, like Dan the Man and things like that. Um, this is another little fun game that I show sometimes. And just to clarify again, that wasn't a freeze. That was the the, the phone trying to do uh, the game trying to show me a tutorial. I am seventy eight years old. I'll go Josie. I'm a lady today, right? So this is another game that I've tried before, and uh, this is a cool little game. So 
Doesn't really, you know, this doesn't really um, need... I'm missing all the coins. This doesn't need a lot of uh, power to actually play this game, but... Um, yeah, this doesn't need a lot of power, but... You can see that it's, it, it, it's easy to play. So I don't want to focus too much time on gaming. Um, one thing that someone did ask about today was the screen as far as typing goes. Now, this is something, see if I can bring this up, where's the, I had I brought this up in preparation. Right, so as far as typing goes, someone's asking about the screen and I left a comment saying that, yeah, I've had no problems with the screen and typing and all that is fine. But after seeing that, I paid a little bit closer attention to it. Um, so, testing the screen. Now, I I have occasionally been making some mistakes typing, but that's, you know, normal for me with the phone. The only thing I've really noticed with the screen as far as the quality of the screen and the responsiveness is occasionally, see see if you make a, a spelling mistake, sometimes, sometimes it, it kind of brings up the option for select all and all that. And say, for example, when I get to, I want to get to the R sometimes, and then I go to the C. See, I'm, I'm jumping between the C uh, the S and the R there. Sometimes it doesn't go to the character that I want. Now, I think this is more to do with the, the UI. I think it is. Uh, so sometimes what you have to do is kind of maybe just delete the whole word to go back. Um, but I have found that sometimes it isn't going to the letter that I want. Maybe it's my fat fingers, but to be honest, I've got kind of... <laughs> I've got small hands. I don't think that's a major issue. Um, yeah, so every so often I, I do feel that it's not going to the correct letter and it's bringing up this screen. But it could be the user interface and it could be something that's going to be addressed in an update. So, yeah, I think it's too early for me to say whether it's the phone or the, the user interface. My guess is it is the interface, the the software, sorry. I believe it's MIUI and I suspect it would get better in a, a software update. It's not a major problem. I had this with an, an older phone um, where they fixed it with a software update, but yeah, it's too easy, too too early to tell, sorry, at this stage. Now, I have did my camera test and I showed you all the video quality. What I'll do is I'll bring up my photos. Um, I took a lot of, you can see a lot of the, uh, the videos that I took over the last few days. Um, I took some photos of friends. I was trying out the camera and all that. Um, the other day, some pictures of my friends. Um, one of the coolest thing, and I'll show you this in a second with the camera app, um, is the bokeh effect thing that you can do. Um, I think, I where did I try that? Where did I try that? Too many photos. So they've got the bokeh effect thing. Um, that one didn't turn out too well. This one. So this is an example of the bokeh effect. And what you can do is, you know, get the subject in focus and the rest of it gets blurred. And they call it portrait mode, but it, it works really, really well. You have to make sure that the you know you're taking the picture from the right angle. If you're too close, the depth effect won't work. If you're too far away, it won't work. But the portrait mode, which I'm going to show you in a second, works really, really well. Now I, I did focus. These are all the videos that I took the other day, and I was showing you the, the quality of the video. I've been very, very impressed by that. Um, and there's another one showing you the portrait mode. Look at it looking all so cute there. Um, now, I do encourage you all to go out there and check out photo samples and all that. I have been testing it out, but it's not like I've been spending hours going around and checking it. I've just been messing around with the camera settings, etc. Um, this is my friend's dog, Fred. He's a little, he's a great little dog as well. And you know, this poker effect thing looks uh, looks amazing when you, when you get it in the right shot. So, the default camera app. Um, it's not going to be a replacement for something like open camera, I don't think. That gives you more control, but this is certainly more user-friendly. So you've got this main photo mode, and this is where it will uh, log on to when you first load up. And I'll zoom out so you guys can see this properly. Short video, video, photo, portrait, square, panorama, and the manual mode. And in the manual mode, you can change the ISO, you've got the shutter speed, and you've got I think it's aperture and white balance, panorama mode, square. So 
So some modes are taken away when you put it into self modes, or some settings rather. Now at the top here, at the top here you can see there's an AI mode, AI camera, there's HDR, you can put it on or auto, um, there's a flash, off or auto, I'll put it on auto, um, and then you've got these filters, there's a lot of different filters here. I'll try and zoom in a little bit better for you guys. So there's a lot of different uh, filters, so if I turn around, so like that, um, the filters are a little bit different for selfie mode, so as I said, you do lose some of the settings when you go to selfie mode. I'm a soda, black and white fade. I'm obviously not showing you that great because there's nothing to really take a picture of. Um, but you can see there's lots of different filters, kind of like Instagram filters. When you go to the settings mode, it's going to be different for, you know, whatever section you're in. Um, so there's a beautify mode, group selfie, tilt shift, straighten, timer, settings. Uh, the settings is just the general settings area. You can change the location uh, for where you save things, camera sounds, dual camera watermark, show grid lines, scan QR codes, picture quality, um, volume buttons. You can change what the volume buttons do, contrast. As far as as far as camera apps go, I definitely think this is one of the better ones out there, in my opinion. I definitely think that. It's not too basic, but it's still very user friendly. Um, of course, if I go back and put it into video mode, the, the settings are going to be a little bit different. You can see the slow motion video there. Um, you can see time lapse and you can see the general settings. Video quality, I can do 4K. I can choose between 264 and 265 for the video encoder, which is very good. Um, there's video for slow motion as well, 1080p at 240 frames per second if you want. Focus mode, continuous autofocus or tap to focus. Anti-branding, fingerprint shutter, there's a lot of settings there. I haven't really explored every single setting there, I'm still testing a lot of it. All in all, I, I do think for me, for, for video recording, I would, I'll would i probably continue to use open camera. I talked about this in the, in the video the other day where when I was recording at 4K, the default app stopped at 8 minutes. Now that didn't happen with open camera. I suspect it's something to do with, you know, some setting in the default app to stop the battery overheating and stop, or I don't know, maybe preserve battery life, I don't know. It's something you do see uh, in compact cameras sometimes as well. For example, the Sony RX100 range, when you go in, in uh, 4K, you only get five minutes and then, you know, after that it, it shuts off to stop, uh, stop it from overheating. Perhaps something is at play there as well with the default app. But then when I used open camera, I recorded it 4K for 13 minutes and there was no problem. So yeah, there is a way around it. But the default camera app is pretty good. Um, I think, um, again, there's, there's the portrait mode. So you can see they're saying move further away. In fact, you can't see that, but move further away, further away from object. So see if I can get this up. I'm still too far away. Yeah, it's not going to, in fact, I'm going to have to hold it like that. See if I can do this. So it's saying, right, so basically it says move further away and then it says depth effect. And the photo that I just took there, which I was hoping to show you in camera, but I couldn't, but that was the photo I just took with the portrait mode in it. And that's the one that gives you that bokeh effect. So zooming in on the pen, but it's blurring a lot of things in the background. I must admit, out of all the different things there, the, the time lapse, the time lapse thing is the one that speeds it up, kind of anti slow motion. The slow motion feature is quite cool, but I must admit, the portrait mode, this bokeh effect mode, is certainly the mode that I've been using the most. And I do think that moving forward, when I am taking photos, if I'm taking a photo of a friend or myself in a selfie, I would probably be more likely to, to use that. So, can I get it there? I'm not sure if it's going to work so well in selfie mode. No, I don't think it is. Worth a try. But um, yeah, I do think this portrait mode is is really good. And it's, it's definitely one of the best selling points of this phone and the phone's camera. So, I, I have undoubtedly missed out a lot of things. There's a lot of things I haven't touched upon in this, uh, in this review, in this video. Um, I wanted to just show you that user interface. I wanted to show you how it works. 
performance isn't an issue, guys. It really isn't. I've been very, very happy with it. And I think that over time, I might find out some quirks that I don't like, or maybe there'll be something that I notice that I don't like. But right now, I must admit, yes, it's only been a week. And yes, I am still in a honeymoon period. The honeymoon period after, you know, coming from a phone with bad battery life. But right now, I love the battery on this. I love the display. It's small. It's portable. It's sexy on its own. But when I add it to my sexy red case, it is even sexier, in my opinion. Um, it's small. It's sexy. The battery life so far has been amazing. You could even say top notch. Uh, I'm very happy with the camera. I'm very happy with the video quality. Um, the jump in performance video quality wise from my last phone isn't night and day. It is a, a small incremental improvement. But I do think uh, the photos are better. And I just think that, I mean, as far as performance goes, in comparison to the HTC U11, and grant, I know I'm making a lot of comparisons here, but this phone last year was a flagship phone. And this phone cost six hundred pounds, like a year or so ago, and you know this can you can now buy this for two hundred and fifty pounds, and this is faster. Now I'm not going to say that if you've got a flagship from last year, you're going to pick this up and say, "Wow, this is the fastest phone I've ever used." If you're going from a flagship phone from last year, you'll notice a slight difference. If you're going from a phone from two years ago, you'll notice a bigger improvement. But it is a night and day, and I must admit, you know, this is four gigabytes of RAM and it's a Snapdragon eight three five. Even now, I don't think this phone is slow. It's still a fast phone. It's still a, a well-performing phone. But this is ever, ever so slightly faster. Um, it's not always noticeable, but it's ever so slightly faster. Battery life has been fantastic. I'm very happy with the cameras. Um, the front camera seems really good as well. And there's still a lot of things I'm figuring out, guys. You know, you probably saw that when I was talking about the photo quality. I've taken some photos, but I've not spent days testing the photos. Most of the photos I've been taking have been, you know, to, to list something for sale. And I've taken I've taken a quick photo of it and then uploaded it somewhere. I've messed around with the portrait mode the most. This portrait mode for the bokeh effect is fantastic. Um, and it's something I really, really do love. But I, I need to spend more time um, practicing the camera, seeing what it can do on its own. Um, the bokeh effect mode is really, really good. There's, that's my mum and dog's, uh, mum and dad, mum and dogs. <laughs> that's my mum and dad's dog, Isa. This is my friend Michael's dog, Fred. He's, uh, he's beautiful as well. Um, and there's all, some of the videos that I'd, I'd been taking as well. Um, and I, I took some, is that a time-lapse? Yeah, that's a time-lapse video. So that shows you the kind of, the fast one. Um, and I'll quickly, I think, uh, was that around the same time I did the slow motion video? Yeah, I think it was. Now, yeah, very happy with the battery, very happy with the user interface, very happy with performance. Camera's good, the camera app's really good as well. Slow motion's quite a cool feature as well. So, yes, overall, guys, I'm very, very happy with it. I'd like to do a, another video, guys, and just tie up my thoughts on this. This has been more of a, a look at the, the specifications the user interface, the, the default camera app, and just a quick look at YouTube and gaming. But yeah, you can tell I'm really happy with this phone. I think it's a, a fantastic phone. And I, I think you're gonna find it very hard to beat this phone on price and value. You might get a Galaxy Note 9 and it might be a slight improvement over this, but it isn't worth three to four times the price. It just simply isn't worth that. It really isn't, and I think I'm, I'm going to disagree with anyone that says that. The, the, the Galaxy Note 9 is going to be a better phone. I think it's a better phone. I've not tested it, but I, you know, looking at the reviews, I think it's a better phone. But it should be a better phone. It's more than three times the price. For value, this is the phone that everyone should be looking at right now. It really is, and I really can't stress that enough. For the price, this is one fantastic phone. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've... Um, you've enjoyed this. I'm sure anyone who has been thinking about buying one of these uh, will have enjoyed this. For everyone else, it's probably been very boring. Um, yeah. If I have missed anything out, guys, and I'm sure I have, if I've missed anything out in this review, please do leave a comment. I'll, I'll do my best to respond right away or at the very least test whatever you're unsure of. There are some things this doesn't have. It doesn't have NFC. It doesn't have the HD, v, uh, HD video with the Netflix and Amazon Prime apps. But it has a good battery. It has a headphone jack. 
And in my opinion, it's damn sexy. Until next time, guys, take care.